Welcome, welcome, welcome to a festive edition of Stew's Wrestling Podcast, episode 161. My guest is waiting in the wings all the way from the good old US of A. It is women's wrestling veteran, former WWE star. It's none other than Miss Renee Michelle on Stew's Wrestling Podcast today. Hello, Renee. How are you? Hey, Stu. Thank you for having me. Not a problem, not a problem. Now, I know you've been busy this year with bookings. How's 2023 been for you? Oh, it's been great. I can't complain. Um, I, Actually, I got like one thing checked off my list was the UK. So I was over there for progress for a whole month on tour. Thank you. I had a lot of fun there. And I was able to spend time with, like, with my in-laws too. Amazing, amazing. You were in Birmingham as well. Yeah, your, husband, your husband's home city. How how was Birmingham? How was it? I like it. There? I like it. You know, like you hear different stories about Birmingham, but I guess where I'm at is like, you know, I guess people say like Birmingham's kind of like a rough section, but I guess not. It's like everywhere, Renee. It's like everywhere else. It's bad and it's good. So that's that's it. That's it. True. Yeah. How how was it at Progress? How were the matches? How was the crowd? Uh, I always ask you guys this. How does the crowd differ over here to the US? Oh, wow. The crowd over here is the um, and especially in the UK, is the best. They're like very, very involved. They're very in tune. Um, they're very supportive on either side. I mean, more so <laughs> the baby faces over there um wrestling i was able to face real and i was able to face in session moth and la taylor so they're all good they're all good talents aren't they they've done so well so oh, yeah, yeah just they're, they're so good how how was the crowd for you oh i love it i love it and everyone they were all super cool like i was nervous at first because i wasn't sure how the uk crowd would take me you know here's me you know they don't know anything about me, you know, very much so they probably know more about my husband because he's original from there. But, you know, as time progressed, it's like, I actually like it. I would not mind coming back to the UK again. What were some of your favorite parts of the trip? Obviously having a whole month, fantastic. I know guys, you know, sometimes come over for the weekend and they go back back to the homeland so you're having that month over here and just yeah your experiences outside of the ring and outside of the wrestling bubble just stuff that you can pick out that you really liked over here well yeah obviously but I was also spending a lot of time with my in-laws so I'm glad that I was able to spend that time with them you know and then having to go you know to the gardens and check that you know the history around in England and high tea like with my mother-in-law like I'm very much a, a fan of scones and clotted cream and jam. So that's Absolutely. definitely my favorite. You're talking my lingo there. I, I'm not, do you know what? I'm not a scone for a while, actually. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to get some. Absolutely. I do like a oh, scone. It's delicious. I like, I wish they had like that type of ingredients over here in the, U, in the U.S. But maybe they do. And I just don't know about it. But yeah. some of the scones that I have tried, like from the grocery store and stuff here, it, nothing compared to the UK scones. Oh my word! Absolutely, absolutely. Now I was doing some fat finding, some digging about you when you were training, and I've had this man on the show back about three years ago, Mister Dwayne Gill. We know him as Gilberg. Oh so yes. yeah. Was your time with Dwayne Gill, learning your craft, you're learning how to wrestle. Uh, what a guy! What a man he is. Well, Got a lot. Well, the thing is, like, with, with Dwayne, like, bless him, he's the one who actually found me. So I would definitely give him credit for that. And I was only there for, like, a little bit. Honestly, it was, like, three months before the school shut down. So <laughs> it's, like, that little bit of time. You know, I wish I, – I don't know what happened. I probably would never know, like, the true story of that. But, you know, from there, I was able to meet Dan McDevitt, who is the owner of MCW, which is Maryland Championship Wrestling. So I kind of more so feel that I actually got my actual training mm -hmm. there. And then within a year, year and a half, I had an opportunity to go to Japan. And there was a tryout that was being held in New York by um, Chigu the Nagayo. And 
if anyone knows Chiku Vinagio, she's also Meko Satomura's trainer. And first, Meko is actually her first protege from back in the day. And if you saw the documentary called Gaia or Gaia Girl, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So Chiku Vinagio and line is Asuka, they were known as the Crush Girls back in the day. And there were the infamous tag team wrestling, you know, in Japan. So a lot of like people, there the women there were really good. Like, you know, Alondra Blaze have wrestled her, a lot of like, you know, old school wrestlers. Um, I'm definitely a fan of Toyomi Megumi, you know, and the list goes on from there. But then um Luckily, I was there to say for about a year. So I didn't want to get any type of special treatment because I'm a foreigner. I told her, treat me just as the same as he would treat the Japanese. So she did. And I I love it ever since then. But um, during the tryout, you know, there were men and women there. And doing the drills and everything else was a breeze for me. And luckily, I guess maybe because I have that martial arts background, but then when it comes to promo, like I decided to cut mines in Japanese, but never in a million years I ever thought I ever had to utilize it because I took Japanese when I was in college. I wanted to challenge myself, whereas a lot of people, they would either take Spanish or French, you know, so when I saw Japanese there, I was like, well, let me try it. So who would have thought, A, I would have become a wrestler and B, I would utilize the Japanese language. What an opportunity so early on for you as well, going there, you know, the style. Was it was it strong style for you? Okay, so a lot of people with the strong style, how that came about, and it was very surprising because Chiguza told me, because she said that I wish I knew what I knew now than I knew back then. Because a lot of people, they were getting hurt back then. Like Chiguza, she had like 17, 18 different surgeries on her whole body you know, throughout all those years of wrestling. But the strong style really came from when someone went over to Japan, they learned their style here. And because the Japanese are really good at like selling and perfecting their craft is to make it look like you're being killed or look like you're, you know, you're being annihilated, but you're just really good at selling. Or you just really know how to make it look like you're killing somebody. So whoever that person was, they took that, they bring it to America or whoever, and then they just start beating the hell out of each other and go like, oh, what's Japanese strong style? It's just a myth. It's like, mm -hmm. it's a myth, it's a lie. You know, and a lot of people who like take that and go like, oh, I wanna be like this, they're doing it completely wrong. That's not the art form. No, at, not at, at all. all. Which I didn't know. I didn't know until you've told me. So I've learned something there. Yeah, it was, it was really, it's really a myth. And they took that mm -hmm. myth and then they just took it and take it a mile away. The strong style is to like look strong, but also still protect mm -hmm. your opponent. And to make it by looking strong is like mm -hmm. delivering the impact, but like in a safer way, you know, but also selling it like as if mm -hmm. you're really getting your butt whooped too. So it, it's like if you watch like acting and like action movies and stuff, it looks crazy and off the wall, but you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. How long were you in Japan, Renee? Um, for about a year. I wow. lived there for about a year. I love it. Like my opportunity, my plan was to move to Japan, but I ended up meeting my husband along the way. So things change. <laughs> She, she she definitely wanted me to like to move to Japan and that was that was definitely the goal because I absolutely love it. And um you know, like I met my husband was set up on a blind date by Rebby Hardy and yeah. Things it's went the, from there. The rest is history on that one. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. How yeah, she goes, she's she's right. sad about it. She's uh, like, okay, right. well, I still want you to come back, but just no babies yet, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of got to be here with my husband. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> How about yeah. the culture there? I've asked people, obviously, who have had on who've wrestled in Japan as well. I love asking 
because you get different viewpoints on on Japan and just yeah the the culture the lifestyle how was that for you uh i absolutely love it um the culture is more so being selfless you know it's more so being aware and and selfless not like thinking about yourself but thinking of those who are around you so if you're on the train track you wouldn't want someone that's loud and obnoxious or anything like that so why would you do that so that's why the train track, you know, being on a train is like more so quiet, you know, um, everything's clean, you know, because mm-hmm. they care about the environment. They care about, you know, where they're at, you know, so they want things to be in impeccable order. Um, recycling is a thing. Um, they're not a fan of leftovers because they feel like it's not good to have any type of leftovers. So when you have the food, eat it all there. They don't believe in leftovers as it's like contaminated, you know, after that. So it, it, the list goes on from there, you know. Where we, where were you based in Japan as well? That'd be nice to hear for the viewers and the listeners. I was in Chiba. So it's pretty much, it looked very much like the Gaia documentary, um, nothing but farmland surrounded by nothing. <laughs> but Asian pear trees and farm and <laughs> barely any Wi-Fi in order to get to the train. You have to take like a 40 minute walk in order to get to Tokyo. It's like a two and a half minute ride. <laughs> so, so I was pretty much isolated, which I don't mind, you know, because I'm there for work and my focus is training and getting better and learning their, their style, their way, their, culture, their lingo, their, and also as well as I was learning more and advancing more with my Japanese, they was also learning English for me. That's cool. That's cool. Man. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I know like all you, all you guys speak so fondly of Japan. It's, it's incredible. It's oh, incredible. I love man. it. I love it. They're very respectful. They're very kind. Even the fans as well. They're not like obnoxious or, or anything like that. When they watch, the crowd is quiet, but they're actually really watching, you know, because they solely enjoy it. And that's their way of enjoyment. Like, granted, like here, probably like in the U.S. or the U.K., they're like cheering and rowdy and everything else. But, you know, everyone has their different way of enjoyment. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Moving on, I'd like to speak about your time in WWE, obviously the uh, May Young Classic as well. I'd like to speak to you about that. And I've got a graphic to put up as well. Uh, yeah, just do, doing the May Young Classic and uh, be, being in WWE, just that, that experience for you. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, during the May Young Classic was like a lot of fun. Um that's when I just got back from Japan, believe it or not. And basically, during the time at the Mayon Classic, um, basically what happened was that I wrestled against Candice LeRae. And she has far more experience than me. And I was super nervous. I was super excited. But I wish I was more so in better shape during that time. So with my gear, funny story with that, the two with Japanese influence with a mixture of Native American because during because back then I was doing more so of a Native American gimmick and she had like so much far more advanced experience than I do and here's me still new in the business but also just coming back from Japan and I had a lot of fun what was funny about that is that if you watch the match and I did like a nip up in there I broke my toenail, clearly right right across from a nip up. I don't know how I did that, but I continue on with the match, you know, and um, her finisher. It was just definitely, it was, it was quite a stinger from that, but I had a lot of fun. I wouldn't mind being in the ring with Candice LeRae again. And now that I'm more, more experienced than I was before, Mm -hmm. I definitely would love to like, have like a second chance with that that's cool that's cool i've got to say as well obviously do it, doing your on screen stuff with drake maverick obviously your husband absolutely absolutely loved it i love the mm-hmm. comedy i absolutely love the comedy of it all 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, like that is that is us. That is truly us. Um I I love him a lot, but he's he's so damn goofy. You know, but that's what like caught my attention with him. Like it was funny because even though we were set on a blind date, we were already kind of like chit chatting on um he actually slid into my DMs and the first thing they said to me was hello Pocahontas lady. So, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who says that? You know, but he he did, and yeah, we've been married for now for like seven years now. He's how honey. how how was it? How was it doing the vignettes and stuff for you? Oh my goodness, it was a lot of fun, but it was also stressful because <laughs> how I end up coming involved in that with okay so. It was on our wedding. Oh yeah, so where was that? The wedding, um, excuse the noise. But um, the wedding actually, I, I thought it was gonna be like, kind of like Sarah Logan, like how her her guy had their wedding and everything, you know, nice and nice editing and whatnot. <laughs> Completely wrong. Two hours prior to me walking down the aisle, this was thrown at me and I'm like, what? You know, so. Um, the character Renee Maverick, actually Renee Maverick was upset about it, but me, I'm like, I don't care. You know, the, the actual me, Renee, it's like, sure, you know, but, uh, what was funny is that when our truth popped up, popped out of nowhere from the, <laughs> I don't know what angle he popped up out of, and then he rolled my husband up, they were on the back of my wedding dress. So it's not like just a simple little poofy dress. This dress was a cathedral gown, you know? <laughs> so between my husband, our truth or Brewer, the referee, I got a big ass black footprint at the back of my dress. And then I guess one of them ripped my veil. So my bridesmaids didn't want to tell me that. Thanks guys, you know? <laughs> because they, they don't want my day to feel like being ruined or whatnot. But I really couldn't move either because A, they're on top of it, and B, I'm surrounded by, you know those candles that's floating in the water? Like, can you imagine me being catched on fire? I'll be a burning, flaming bride at this point. So I'm like making expressions at them, like, off my dress, <laughs> like, you know? So it was just so well done. It's not easy to do the comedy side either. It's not easy to do. It's just pure, pure entertainment, pure entertainment. Oh, I was, oh, I was... I that's definitely stitches. my husband. I was that's definitely my husband. Even even on the previous time on Impact as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That, that is, everything that you see, how goofy as he is, that is really him. That is him to a T. <laughs> and he's always on the go. He is he's like an energizer bunny. He's just going and going and going. <laughs> So I guess in a way it balances out. Like I'm more of the calm one. He's more of like always on the go and it, it works for us. I mean, he abuses me. He makes me laugh. So <laughs> I love it. I absolutely I love comedy. I love comedy in the wrestling when you can when yeah, you know, it's, pe it's people hard, are able to do it. It's hard to make me laugh. So the fact that actually he can make me laugh is like is a plus for me. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I was looking through as well. Obviously, you've had matches for AEW as well. Uh, yeah. Last l last year, how how was the AEW experience? I went to uh, I went to All In at Wembley. Uh, I said I'll go to the first AEW show when they when they started in 2019. But yeah, back to you. Sorry, just your experience in AEW. Um, during my experience in AEW, I had fun during the time. Obviously, there's a lot of wrestlers. There, you know, you don't know what exactly what they're looking for is is same with WWE or Impact at the right place, right time, and what mood, you know, you're they're looking for. So yeah, it's just it's just one of them things. Absolutely. How about impact as well? I think we need to speak. You know, you've worked you've worked for all the top companies, Renee, which is testament to you. So yeah, impact. We'll we'll segue into impact. Um, Impact, I had a lot of fun. Um, I was in a tag team match, and I actually was able to get in the ring with Jazz. 
man, getting in a ring with Jad is like your auntie trying to whoop your butt. <laughs> you know? so but um, I love Jazz. I have like all the respect and love for her in the world. She's one of my favorite people. Um, you know, she's a phenomenal worker, especially like looking at her stuff like back in the day. It's like, oof. You know, like I would hate to be in Jazz, <laughs> be in a ring with Jazz back in the day. <laughs> like Jazz is a little slow down, slow down now. You know, her knees are not as good as they used to be, but she still whooped my butt. <laughs> Rather you than me getting in there with Jazz. I wouldn't get in there. With, I would not get in there with that lady. I tell you, not a chance. Yeah, I think just just longevity, longevity. The amount of time she's been in the business, it's test testament to her, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, like she's a great person. She's a great friend. I see her like an auntie. You know, um, her ring work. You know, especially like now, I still think it's good, but she feels like she slowed down. I'm like, no, nah, you still got it. <laughs> but um, looking at her ring work from back in the day, she's like phenomenal. I feel like, you know, I don't know. I kind of feel like I wish that she had more, not so much like, I guess like more of an opportunity or more eyes been on her, but you know, things were different. So what can you do? Outside of wrestling, Renee, what what's your what are your hobbies? What do you like doing? I know obviously wrestling is so prevalent in your life, but yeah, you you, you know in your downtime, what what's what's your hobbies? What's your interests? Oh, my hobbies, my interests. Oh gosh, well I do like horse riding, so there's that. I do like archery. I do like you know being in the sun, you know more so. Um, Back then, I would say martial arts, you know, but I haven't, like, I stopped doing that for, like, so many years now. Um, uh, home home decorating. <laughs> I'm more of the home decorating. Um, but also, like, I do actually have, like, an actual shoot job, you know. Like, I'm a CEO of a government contracting firm. You know, but a lot of people, I guess, when they look at me, they go like, oh, she's just a wrestler. Oh, she's just a model. It's like, no, you guys, I was doing this since I was 19 years old. You know, just because I don't put it on socials, that's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Like, what I put there on socials is what I want you to see. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I like to have a very private life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just me. I definitely like, love trying different types of food and cuisine. I'm a foodie, so and I love to cook. So that's like a plus for my husband. He's like very happy that, you know, he married someone who's very like, I guess he would call it like very old fashioned in a way. I I do the whole cooking and cleaning and like <laughs> home decorating and archery and horse riding and trying out different foods. And I, I guess I'm very, I guess I became boring now. <laughs> <laughs> what what food do you like making, Renee? I've got, I think we should oh. extend extend off that. We get specific. Well, well, I mean, if you like Southern food, I can cook some Southern food. If you like Cuban food, I can make that. I can make some Filipino food. I'm actually like pretty getting pretty good with the British food. You know, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I like making more of a home comfort type of food, mm -hmm. like you know your steaks, your beef, and stuff like that. Um, actually, a lot of James' friends, they love to come over during the holidays because I make a big feast, you know? Amazing. So it, That's great. It really depends on what you fancy, so. Which which British dishes do you like making? I'd like to. Uh, Yorkshire pudding. Oh, with, yes. Yes, with the pot, with the pot Yeah. Absolutely. And, I like a Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, but it's like, you guys like have like having like the bangers and mash or whatever. Oh yes. But not the way I like to make my mashed potatoes is like a garlic butter, garlic lemon mm -hmm. zest with it with the parsley and everything. So fair, like, play, fair play, fair play. You know, being able to do all those different international styles yeah. as well. That's, that's oh, yeah. cool. That's I cool. I love it. I love it. Um, like Serena D, she was like telling me like you should make a cookbook, <laughs> you know, and I'm like. I could, but then I, now I have to like look at like every measurement that I have been like doing, and I I don't like I eye it out. You know, it's kind of hard. 
because I go by taste and smell and I, you know, and iron things out. Renee, what about TV, films, things of that nature? What do you like? Well, what do you like? I, I assume you like watching stuff like that. Well, lately, um, I've been into... Lately, there's a show that's called Bridgerton. I've been into that lately. <laughs> you know, I love that. Um, I also love the show In Betweeners. That's hilarious. The British, the British version. Yes, yes. oh, okay, right. Yeah, it makes sense that you'd watch that. Actually, yeah, the, the American version. Uh, There's no an American version. Yeah, no disrespect. You can't remake. I'm, I stand by this. That that can't be done. But other shows have had American spin. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you like the British one. I thought you were going to say the American one. No, I didn't know there was an American. Yeah, version. there was an American. Was yeah. <laughs> well, that's something I that I found out. Like, no, and then, um, you know, like, my husband, he's a fan of horror movies. He loved them. Me, I can't watch horror movies. I can't watch it by myself. So I'm more into, like, I'll just stick with my Bridgerton series. I'm waiting for the third one to come out. It needs to hurry up. My wife watched it, obviously. I was half watching it, watching my stuff, so I've seen... I have seen bits of Bridgerton along the way, but uh, yeah. yeah, my wife, my wife did enjoy, like yourself, she enjoyed Bridgerton. Yeah. Yeah. But um, also like, I love to travel, like, you know, but mm -hmm. thank God for wrestling, you know, you're able mm -hmm. to like travel the world and like me interesting people along the way. And, mm -hmm. you know, I love it. I don't mind it at all. You can't put a price on that, you, you guys. No, you when can't. you when you do get downtime in these places, because I know it's so much for the profession, like yeah. you guys, you guys getting time, getting days to go and explore. Like I'm, yeah. I'm envious. I'm envious of that. I'm envious of that. Yeah. That's like that's the side. Yeah, like, and then I have done belly dancing. That that was a lot of fun. I'm gonna try to see if I can convince my husband to do salsa dancing with me because he he has dancers' hips. He loves like Patrick Swayze. So I've seen him dance a few times. He's and I'm got like, it. he got the dancer's hips, man. Yeah. <laughs> if he could just apply that to salsa, yeah. it would be great. <laughs> I can see him doing it. If there's anyone who will do that, it's him. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He I can see him. I can see him like being like you say, limber the hips. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and he'll get he'll get into the character of it as well, won't he? Oh yeah. You know, definitely. Knowing your husband like I do from television and meeting him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like he, he's actually a really good dancer, believe it or not. You know, now if I could just get him to apply it to salsa, <laughs> that, would be, <laughs> that would be great. That's amazing. That's amazing. Renee, again, like you were saying about the travel, where would you like? Where would you like to go? Not necessarily. Uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily for wrestling. You know, if you were to go on holiday, say, mm -hmm. where would you like to go and visit? Where would I like to go and visit? Where you Boston? haven't been. I mean, I already got Japan off the list. I wouldn't mind going back to Japan. And honestly, like, I wouldn't mind, like, exploring the different parts of, you know, of Europe. You know, I do want to go to, like, Italy or, you know, France. You know, so there's that, you know. But um, I definitely wouldn't mind coming back to England and, like, visiting, like, Scotland or Ireland. You know, so there's... A little mm -hmm. bit different parts. I mean, I already been to like um Barbados and that was actually me wrestling out there. Wow. And I already been to India and that's from wrestling out there. And that was actually for uh, the Great Kali show. So th that was like the biggest crowd that I ever experienced. It was 75,000 fans out there. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. It was very much built like a WrestleMania event. Mm hmm. So and then um, yeah. Like, I wouldn't mind like you know going to like maybe like Mexico, like different parts of Mexico, mm -hmm. like Tulum. You know, going back there. So plenty on the list. Plenty yeah. on the list of places. Plenty to on go the to. list. I mean, like we've been talking about wanting to go to Hawaii, but it's just our schedules. It's just mm -hmm. very complicated. But I would say, above all, I think Hawaii is like on top of the list. That's, that's a, it, it does, what I've seen on television. It does look does look amazing. It does look yeah, amazing. right. It's so beautiful. It looks, I just eat, yeah, I just want to eat all the food there, like all the food. <laughs> <laughs> 
then you then you can come back and cook it at home. Right. Have yeah, it, exactly. It, that'll be another cuisine that you can yes, set up for that, that, is, that is my thing. Because it's like when I went to the Philippines and I was in Manila, Manila and then La Union and then Boracay. Boracay is like a little island. Mm-hmm. You have to take a flight. It's like an hour flight, you know, from Manila. And the water there is just clear as could be. The sand is white. The food is always fresh. It was very cheap, like, but you get like this whole gourmet platter, you know? So when I tried the food there, like I had to learn the recipe. So I would just ask you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to ask it. Wrestle Cade was recently. Yes. Was like, a, like a two a two day, was it two, three days? I think, was it the 25th? Three days. 20... Like, I think it was like two, three that, days. Yeah. That was, that was massive. Like I'd heard the Wrestle Cade, but I thought, Oh, this is like convention. I, I knew there'd be matches and stuff. What that that was like a that was like a festival, wasn't it, for you guys? I, I couldn't believe just how big it is now. Yes, I had a lot of fun. It was with like ladies' night out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um I had La Rosa Negra, you know, as the guest referee. She is just wild and crazy as can be. <laughs> like that woman is a hoot. But um the fan, like, I was so overwhelmed. And I guess cause you know, dealing with COVID and everything else, you don't know how people's like men- mentality is mm-hmm. like, or, you know, like, should I give a hug? Should I give a handshake? Should I get a fist pump? Like, I don't know, elbow, like, I don't know. <laughs> so it's like, that's always constantly crossing your mind. But I had a lot of hand sanitizers too. So <laughs> I wasn't trying to catch it again. It's just like you guys, like everything, but like when that was all happening, I know it's it's in the rear view a bit now. It's just like all you guys weren't able to do what you you know you want to do and what you love to do. I I, did, I felt I felt for you all. So it is great that these shows are all, you know, back back coming back. Running, now. Isn't it? You know, as much as it's like three years, you know, we're, we're nearly three years in, aren't we? Well, we are. Um, yeah, it's just it's amazing for you guys. But yeah, yeah, WrestleCade looked amazing. If I, oh, it was so I, many people, so many I, people. If I could have got over there, honestly, that is because I, I love meeting, I love meeting the wrestlers and having a photo. You know, you should, you should come over. I'd love to. I'd love to. I miss, I miss it. I miss not going over for WrestleMania. Maybe next year. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to ask the wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring the bring the wife, bring the baby. <laughs> she like she liked total divas. She liked she oh, yeah. liked uh, she liked Natalia. She loves Natalia, but yeah, I tried to get I tried oh, to get her into it. She watched yeah. uh, she watched Bailey versus Sasha at, um, take over the, the ladder match, and I thought we're on to something here. But no, she's just not. It's not for her. Yeah, she's not. I I thought yeah. this is this is going great. This was early on in our relationship. Oh my god! Oh yeah. Girl, these girls are going for it, aren't they? It's like, yeah, yeah. I said they'll they'll go they'll go these girls. Uh, but yeah, didn't um, didn't carry on. Believe yeah. All the site. And yeah. yeah and, how how were the like, fans, Renee? Uh, the fans they were awesome. They're all super duper nice. Um, I was definitely overwhelmed. Like sometimes, like if you notice, if I had to like walk away from the table, I needed like a bit of a break. <laughs> <laughs> I like I need a bit of a break. But um, other than that, you know. Like, I love it. I wouldn't mind, like, doing it again, you know. But um, after the show, you know, we were able to, like, catch up with some friends along the way, some people that I haven't seen in such a long time. Um, Foxy was there. She's one of my close girlfriends. I absolutely love her, you know. So we were able to catch up. Sue Young, you know, she, mm-hmm. she's been great. She's been feeling good. She's a wonderful mother. So I'm so happy and proud of her. Um, yeah, it's just a long list along the way. And I was able to meet up with like my buddy Chavo. So it's like Ah, Chavo. <laughs> he's the best. Oh my god, he's like I can't believe that like, obviously he's trained people, hasn't he? Obviously, with Iron Claw coming out. Yeah. Uh, he trained I was he trained about that. Zach Zach Efron like trained him. He said he's quite he's quite good once he got to know what wrestling was about. Yeah. I think he I think he was hitting a cross body. And he said he, he executed it perfectly. Like he said, he could. He, he was quite good considering. He said, uh, "You know, quite hey. te- quite teachable." Um, that's which, that's good. Hey, who knows? Zac Efron might become a wrestler after. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for Iron Claw, Renee. 
Oh yeah, I, oh, I am want to buzzing. See it. I am buzzing for that. I've been waiting for yeah. so long. So, but yeah. it's like speaking speaking of Natty, like I've been like going over to like you know train rolling around and training with them over at the Heart Dungeon. So I'm actually having a lot of fun with that. Like, so besides like Chigu Zanagio, who I was training with, um, then when I moved to Florida, mm -hmm. you know, I needed to get rid of like a lot of bad habits. So I started going over to Flatbacks, which is owned by Tyler Breeze and Sean Spears. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those guys, like, I didn't really, like, when you want to become a wrestler, Japan is where that. Now, when you want to become a sports entertainer, WWE and you know all those you know here it's like it's where it's at when I got into wrestling that was told to me I since I was never a fan of wrestling I didn't grow up on wrestling I wanted to become a wrestler so I could understand it mm -hmm. so and and learn it so obviously most of my career was like over in Japan now when I got to Florida and everything and along the way especially on the indies you develop a lot of bad habits and like some of the teaching is like, it's good to learn from different bits of other people along the way and kind of like molding your own. But if you have like some bad habits, like Breeze and Spears, they helped me a lot to brush me up on it. And they were very, you know, I love the fact that they were strict on me, you know, like they wouldn't body coddle, you know, coddle me or anything like that. Like, you know, so they're like really, really good teachers and mentors. Um, and then as time progressed, like, I kind of flip-flop now between, like, Natty and TJ mm -hmm. and, like, going over to Flatbacks, you know, because, like, I also see Flatbacks, like, a second home to me as well. You know, mm -hmm. my first home is always going to be Japan. That would be, like, my actual, well, my second home, like, from here, from being America, is Japan. But then it's like, and I'm always going to have that loyalty to Chiguza. But then also, I'm always going to have that loyalty to Breeze and Spears as well, because they didn't have to, like, teach me to go, like, well, you're already trained. But, you know, I came to school. I did the whole eight weeks course. You know, I some of the stuff, like, I didn't get, but I understood it now by being with them and being around them and learning from them along the way. So how, like, you know, the psychology, like, they brushed me up with that and and the striking, you know, and everything like that. Cause Japan psychology and American psychology, it, it's very different, you know, but Breeze and Spirit, they definitely helped me a lot like with the psychology and then the promos, you know. So then when I went over to Natty and TJ's, um, they definitely helped me out a lot with the psychology over there, but also becoming more aggressive. Even though I wasn't becoming like aggressive over at Flatbacks, but mm -hmm. they helped me out even more so with mm -hmm. that. So. It's like Natty and TJ is not a school, it's invite only, you know, mm -hmm. and and it's more so with other experienced individuals and which I absolutely love. So being around with people who are, you know, let's just say like on a roster or anything like that, I was able to like roll around and be in a ring with them and like they were able to help me like bring out like more of my aggression. That's great. It's just adding stuff, isn't it? You know, to your tool belt and getting that. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, Amazing. I, love, I love the fact that they're, like, very technical in the ring. Mm -hmm. Like, Natty they're very, very technical in the ring. And that I was, like, I absolutely love, you know. But I also love, like, the, the Japan style, too. So, if, God forbid, if I ever had to wrestle another Japanese girl, I could switch it over to that. If I had to wrestle mm -hmm. someone who was more on a technical base, I like to mix all like my styles all into one with a hint of like my martial arts into it. You never stop learning. That's what I'm taking away no. from what you're saying. Constantly evolving. And yeah. uh, uh, it's amazing that you can go to the two. It really is. And, yeah. You, uh, you uh, never stop learning. You never want to mm -hmm. stop not going to training. Like a, a lot of people, well, some of the girls that I have in the locker rooms, with they go like oh well i already pay my dues well i've been 10 years in and i'm still paying dues so you know it's just the most ludicrous thing i ever heard of like i kind of feel like you never want to stop training and it's not so much of like oh this is what i want to learn or this is what i want to do for my next match so that's my training no like no you want to like keep continue on doing it over and over and over again from like a to z you know because God forbid, if you're doing a move, 
and to someone and you crack their skull <laughs> is on you, you know, because you think that you know how to do it correctly, but your footwork and or your hand or the position that you're in, it, it, it's not. So it is what it is. Absolutely. I, I Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I'd it's, like to ask you, sorry. No, it's all about the execution. You need, mm -hmm. you have to have the execution mm -hmm. perfectly. You know, you could like not do it for days and training or whatever, and then you randomly do it. And then mm -hmm. you miss a step or two and you end up injuring someone. You have to continue on doing it. Mm -hmm. You have to keep practicing. That's sound advice, especially that's what I wanted to segue into. Actually, younger younger guys getting into the business, uh, mm -hmm. your your advice for them extending off, obviously because you were talking about training. Just tips, mm -hmm. your Renee Renee Michelle's tips for budding wrestlers who were you know new to the business. Um. So for actually, like a girl like came up to me and she's new to the business. She asked me this. Um. I told her like, look, like you got to hit the gym. You have to. I'm not saying that of like a body shaming type of thing or whatever, but it's more so protection for you because you have to develop muscle because when you're bumping around in the ring and whatnot, it's to protect your body. Just as well as like, if you look good, you feel good, you know, but also it, it's not so much of like, oh, you got to look like a star. Yeah, a star, but yeah, you do want to like mm -hmm. look like one, but also you need the muscle to be able to lift people. You need the muscle to be able to protect yourself. You need the muscle to be able to, God forbid, if someone was, <laughs> yeah, like it, for nearly everything, you have to like, you have to be in the gym. Let alone on top of that, you have outside cardio and in-ring cardio is completely different. Granted, you could run like you know a marathon or whatever but the moment that you get in the ring it's completely there because you're hitting the ropes like back and forth but you're twisting and turning and <laughs> and everything else so it's good to have both you know i would recommend having both but you know you're definitely going to need that in-ring cardio and then with the training you cannot stop training you have to keep training because the moment that you keep stop training and then you decide to get in the ring, your body's sore all over again because it haven't been bumping around and whatnot, or you haven't been doing things that you're supposed to be training on and you're rusty. That's good. No, it's good advice. I love asking you guys about this. I do truly. Um, I've got to ask you now you've wrestled a myriad of people in your career, but who you haven't wrestled that you'd like to pit your wits against inside the ring, the squared circle? Oh, do they have to be signed or do they have not to be signed? It's either or, either or, I'll let that, yeah, you could. So I wouldn't mind being in the ring with Natalia. I would love to be in the ring with Natalia. And then I also would love to be in a ring with Foxy. I'm trying to convince her to get back in the ring. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. She's crazy as a fox, you know, but I would love to be able to get back in the ring with, you know, well, would we'll love to be in the ring with her. Um, I wouldn't mind wrestling against Meko Satamura because that was Chikuda's first protege. And I was Chikuda's first, like, foreign student, you know, that she trained. Um, Io, Io Shirai, she's a phenomenal worker. I would love to be able to work her. Um, ooh. I mean, Chiguza herself, that's for sure. Um, did it have to be men or women? Well, you can, I'm a female. The whole gender, gender, it's, yeah, it can be, it can, can be a man. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't mind going up against Sean Spears. But then again, <laughs> so like, <laughs> but then again, it's like, I'm like thinking he probably hit me upside the head with a chair or something, and I'll just be knocked out. But he's like a really good, you know, he's a really good worker. He, he's a phenomenal worker. And um, yeah, I can't really, hmm, that's, that's about it so far I can think of at the top of my head. Um, yeah, because a lot of the workers that I have, like I work mm. Melina, I work Mickey James. Mm. So that's already off my list. Um, I work jazz, so that's definitely off my list. 
but yeah, like, I mean, obviously, like, Natalia and I, we roll around the ring together, but I wouldn't mind having an actual match with her. The Hearts are my favorite. Obviously, yes. Brett. Brett, I, I finally met Brett. Uh, couldn't couldn't string a sentence together, but the hearts, they're my, they're them, and yeah, what Natalia's done. Yeah, Natalia's definitely. Oh, oh my God. Us. Hall of Fame. It'll be Hall of Fame eventually for her, and she deserves it as well. Oh, absolutely. Again, she worked hard. It's like length, length for time again, you know, in, in the biz. It's just, it, it, you can't say, you can't say yeah. that away. You can't say that away from her, Renee. Yeah, no. And what better way to be in the ring and learn and learn from her? Absolutely. Like she may be teaching me a little bit. She may not be teaching me everything. So, like, <laughs> but I, I like to take my chances up on the top. <laughs> <laughs> do you catch do you catch much wrestling on, on TV or is it just do you stay away from, from it, you know, being in the business? I like asking you guys this as well. So I try to keep up with the product as much as I possibly can. Like, you know, from trying to juggle like AEW, Impact, WWE, mm -hmm. NXT, <laughs> Raw, SmackDown, you know, it, it, it's a lot. It, it truly is a lot, you know, but, um, and also trying to keep up with things on the indies mm -hmm. because it's like the whole COVID thing. I'm still trying to figure out what's still available after COVID. <laughs> so, ah. <laughs> Because yeah. there's some promotions that did went down and some mm -hmm. promotions that's like barely surfacing. But um, you know, as far as like you know, progress is like I absolutely love progress. The girls there are like phenomenal. I need to go to a show. I did say, I think I said off camera to you. I need to go to I I've said to Mike, I've said to Mike Angus, I will go, I will go and do it. So yeah, it's on my list to do. I've yeah, got to, I've got yeah, to get. To, go. I've got to go some of the local shows, Renee. Yeah, you know, what's, what's uh, wrong with you? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm terrible. I just don't. It's getting. It's getting chance. It's getting chance to do it. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe, and, maybe just just drag the baby and the wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping my son will will get into it. I'm, I really uh, am. Oh, maybe uh, he might become like a little wrestler. You never yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> he's built like a rugby player mm. at, th at this stage. He's a big, he's a big kid. He's a big kid already, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, God. As, long as, <laughs> as long as, as long as he can make me some money. Yeah. Whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever it may be. And then, and then I'll retire. I'll call yeah. it a day. But then I'll get bored if I'm not working. So I don't know about that. It's, oh, you uh, can have a hobby. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's double edged. It's double edged. That one. Yeah. Said, it's yeah, definitely a double edged sword. Yeah, absolutely. Renee, where can the viewers and listeners find you in terms of social media? That would be great in, in closing. Yes, absolutely. You can find me on Instagram, which is Lady RM, mm -hmm. as well as you can find me on, t on well, now it's no longer Twitter. Now it's called X, which is one Renee Michelle. Absolutely. Absolutely. Renee, thank you so, so much for sparing the time coming on today. I appreciate it. I know you're busy. It's been yes. great. It's been so insightful as well, you know, what you've done in the business it, from, from obviously independence when you started out, coming into WWE, wrestling for Impact, AEW. And I know you won a lot of titles, especially for MCW along the way, because I was, I was looking, you know, fantastic, oh, yeah. fantastic like, what you've managed to do. Yeah, MCW to shine to like being overseas. Amazing, so. amazing. Yeah, man. And Unbelievable. And, and then obviously, as we've spoken about your time in Japan, uh, you've done you've done an awful lot in ten years. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, and I'm also you've learning done... like, and I'm also learning the British style from my husband. So we'll see. It's it's cool. It's cool. My guest today is veteran women's wrestler Renee Michelle, formerly of WWE. She's wrestled for AEW, Impact Wrestling, so many independents wrestled in Japan. Thank you so much for being a guest for episode 161 of Stu's Wrestling Podcast. Thank you.